watching New Central TV, and this is our continuing coverage of Africa Day here on the square on the square today on the program we want to reflect on this day but also look specifically at modern day slavery uh, in which seven million africans are currently trapped in that cycle we'll have that conversation in a bit we'll also bring you the news from across the continent stay with us here on the square Dakwa is here with the very latest from across the continent, and you look Dakwa looks dapper. <laughs> yeah, in, absolutely. Wh Thank what you do you so call much. what you're wearing? Okay, so this is just a simple, you know, traditional outfit in Nigeria. Mm. Most people, or you know, uh, in contemporary times, they'll call it the senator. I think. I see. And it's just, but the 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 cap is more of a, a nothing, you know, uh, imprint, amazing. You know, amazing. Uh, so basically, it's it's a simple trad outfit in Nigeria. Okay. And, and I, I'm told it fits me best. So absolutely, that's you look you look fantastic. In oh, it. thank you so much. Yeah. So do you too? You look so African. Thank you. My boo is uh, <laughs> very fantastic. Is that what it's called, boo boo? Yes. Oh. I I planned on um, uh, wearing go back and tea, but uh, you know, unforeseen circumstances. <laughs> yeah. So I had to switch to something else. But if you're watching us, that's why we are very we are clothed in very colorful and. Uh, and uh, and stylish. Yes, yeah, stylish outfits. clothes. Well, of course, we are celebrating African Day today. And of course, on that note, I say hello and welcome to African Headlines on New Central Television. Once again, my name is Dakbo Adigboye. Let's get to it. Now, as the African Union celebrates its 60th anniversary, delegates from across the continent gathered in Addis Ababa for the opening ceremony to mark the occasion. Former Chadian Prime Minister and Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahatmet, made an opening statement welcoming those in attendance. The celebration of the 60th anniversary is an opportunity to recognize the role and contribution of the founders of the Continental Organization and many other Africans on the continent. In Central Africa, Chadian leader General Mahatma Idris Debe Idno has pardoned 67 more people who have been sentenced to jail terms following deadly protest against the regime last October. Debbie also issued pardons for 11 people accused of taking part in an attempted coup. According to two decrees dated Wednesday, Idris uh, Itno, Debbie Itno, had already pardoned and released 380 rebels in early April. Then in mid-May, 259 young people convicted as part of the October 2022 demonstrations, claiming to want to favor appeasement and national reconciliation. In East Africa, Sudan's warring sides have accused each other of being behind breaches of the latest ceasefire that was negotiated by the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. Now, in its third day, the one-week truce was violated one, only minutes after it came into effect on Monday night, with residents of the capital, Hatoum, reporting airstrikes and artillery fire shaking the city. Breaches have, been, have since persisted of the ceasefire agreement which is meant to allow for much-needed humanitarian aid to reach parts of the northeastern African country. It is the latest of a series of truths that have all been systematically violated. Let's go to Kenya now. We are Kenya's Interior Cabinet Secretary, Kature Kidiki, has extended the dusk to dawn curfew in Chakana Ranch area by 30 days, even as reports indicate some victims had refused to eat. Speaking on Thursday in Malindi, he also extended all the other measures he had put in place on April 26, 2023. This means that there shall be no public gatherings, processions or movement, either alone or as a group during the period of curfew, in, in or out of Chikama Ranch. Now, Somalia's oil rich Puntland region is holding its first democratic local election since 1967. The election, seen as a significant turnaround for the state, will pit President Said Abdullahi Deni's car party against challengers from six other parties. Puntland's electoral body said that more than 400,000 people had registered to cast ballots. However, there are security concerns due to a dispute between Puntland's regional state president, Denny, and his political opponents who accuse him of plans to extend his term in office. In Southern Africa, one of the world's most wanted genocide suspects, a Rwandan former police chief, 
Fagule Kayashima has been arrested in South Africa. He was charged with playing a leading role in the murder of more than 2,000 people in the church in April 1994. He has spent more than two decades as a fugitive and was living under a false name at the time of his arrest on Wednesday afternoon in Pearl, 35 miles northeast of Cape Town. He was detained by the South African police and members of a tracking team from the Rwandan War Crimes Tribunal based in Oshra, Tanzania. Now, Zimbabwe's main opposition coalition, the Citizens Coalition for Change, CCC, has claimed that some of more than 4,000 prisoners released on presidential amnesty last week included child rapists. President Emerson Nagangwa pardoned the prisoners drawn from the country's 47 prisons in an attempt to decongest the overcrowded jails. Prison authorities at that weather said rape was among offenses excluded from the amnesty. Ukraine's Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba has called for certain African nations to end their neutrality over Russia's invasion of his country. During his visit to Ethiopia, Kuleba held talks with the country's Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, and the head of the AU Commission, Musa Faki Mahatmat, and the current AU Chair, Comoros President Azali Asmani. Kuleba said African countries that are neutral towards Russian aggression against Ukraine project neutrality to the violation of borders and mass crimes that may occur very close to them. And of course, that wraps up the news at this time. Back to you in the studio, Kimini. Well, thank you so much for bringing us the news. We'll see you around. Thank you for having me. So for there with the very latest from across the continent. When we come back, let's discuss Africa Day.